All right, hello and welcome. I am Mystech, and uh, today we're playing Star Trek Online, uh, or as some of my friends like to call it, Sto, which is always amusing for me since uh, <laughs> that's like the Russian word for what. <laughs> so Sto. <laughs> Anyway, a uh, little little side humor there, um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna mix it up a little bit, a little bit different from my normal play. Um, there's a, an event going on in Star Trek Online, and uh, kind of been in the mood to play this. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a completely free to play account. Uh, so you can. It's not a subscription-based game. It is completely free to play. You can go all the way up to 65, which is a maximum level, um, and still have decent ships and, and be pretty, you know, pretty good at the game. Um, or you can take the pay-to-win feature and uh, buy some really nice ships and equipment right off the bat, <laughs> and uh, be even more uh, competitive at the end. So. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of character creation for the first video. Uh, I'm going to probably change some settings as well and cover a little bit of that, and then maybe we'll do the, the first tutorial. I do want to keep these videos shorter, um, as they seem to work out a little better uh, when they're shorter. And uh, so we'll pause in and out a few, a few things. So uh, to start with, we'll cover uh, some of the classes classes here. Uh, so this is an engineering pilot. And you can tell by the gold. Engineers are like the tanking class of, uh, of Star Trek Online. Uh, and then Star Trek Online does have two different play types. So there, there's no like open world like a lot of other MMOs. Uh, most everything is kind of instanced and uh, and you go in like episodes and kind of like mini dungeons or scenarios. Uh, the space combat's really nice, and uh, ground combat is has gotten better. Uh, some of the older stuff was just kind of sketchy, but you know whatever. <laughs> um, so tanking classes go. Uh, tanking in in space is difficult, um, especially for free to play account. So. We, we're not going to go into that. Uh, I, I would just, as a recommendation, if you are going to be completely free, free to play, just kind of, you know, engineers are great. Uh, they still, they can still do damage, and uh, maybe we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how they can play out. Uh, they'll do damage. They just, they survive a lot easier. So, um, if you do take damage, then you can repair your ship a lot easier. Uh, there are threat generation mechanics, and you can do your best to try and keep aggro. But a, a pay-to-win player might come in here and just completely wreck everything in sight, and they'll, they'll change focus to whatever's doing the most damage to them, regardless of how much extra threat you throw out there. Uh, there are tanking builds. Uh, I've seen a few of those, and they do usually require um, the the pay-to-win ships. So they have things that have extra, extra, extra threat generation. So uh, and it's almost never a big deal. So damage is damage. So um, engineers on the ground are, they like put little turrets down, they have little drones. Um, they're actually really fun on the ground in my opinion. Uh, you can just throw down lots of little toys everywhere while shooting at things. Um, and then we have our tactical pilots, and tactical pilots are pretty much straight DPS. You're not going to really tank. Uh, they're going to get shot at because <laughs> you're going to do generally so much damage that things are just going to pay attention to you. Um, normally these ships will run, uh, you run on a, a quick nimble escort type ship with cannons, it just does uh, a ton of damage. And uh, playstyle for these guys, uh, compared to like the engineering pilots, will have beam weapons and they'll, they're generally slow and they'll fly in and then and phaser beam everything. Um, and this is like your Enterprise will uh, an Enterprise is like an engineering type ship. Uh, you can build it out similar to a tactical ship, uh, but most tactical ships are like the USS Defiant from Deep Space Nine. They are smaller, they are very fast, nimble, and they usually use cannons. Uh, tactical pilots can still use 
cruisers and beam weapons. Uh, that's actually my preferred style because I have a I'm not very good at flying ships, <laughs> so um, that's something I'm still working on. And then uh, the third class, and this is what we're going to play through, is a science class, um, where these two can play very similar to each other. Uh, they can use the same ships, same loadouts. It's just like these might die, technical pilots might die, but they'll do more damage. And engineering pilots don't do quite as much damage, but they have a lot more survivability. Um, on the ground, uh, these are all about shooting and killing things, um, throwing grenades, um, do damage <laughs> is tactical, and uh, engineering is um, technical. I mean, I, my first character was an engineer, or actually no, my first character was tactical, and then my second character was engineer, and then I tried science and fell in love with that playstyle. It is com for the most part completely different. You can play any class similar to anything else, uh, but science characters do special things and usually require special ships. Uh, like the USS Voyager was a science vessel. Um, and if I remember right, if we we can get that style of ship and, and play it as a science pilot. Um, so those are classes. You only get three. Uh, and you notice I have an, also a Mr. and a Miss Tech down here as well, but these are Klingon. And uh, I'm going to run a dual series. So we're going to run a Federation Science Pilot, and we're going to run a Klingon Defense Force uh, run as well. Both free to play. So um, if you're interested in what these are and what they look like, tune into that other video as well. Watch them both. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and do the sharing thing while you're at it. <laughs> uh, okay, so boring stuff out of the way. Let's get into character creation and uh, we'll cover some of the factions and uh, races. And I don't know, well, races here. So we got an Andorian. I, I like Andorians. They're probably my favorite race. Uh, that's from Star Trek Enterprise and uh, Shran. If you're not familiar with Shran or Enterprise, Enterprise got a lot of like negative feedback at first, and then I think people liked it. I really liked Enterprise. It's probably my favorite um, of all of them. Uh, and Shran is an Andorian, and he's just awesome, in my opinion. So uh, This is an alien. <laughs> there is no specific race for this. You can be other races, and we'll cover that in a second. Um, oh, you can zoom in. That's great. And I did... Um, I don't want to go too crazy. I have seen like giraffe necked trolls, ogres, little pixies, little uh, devil creatures like super tiny, um, I green large headed aliens uh, like from Mars Attacks and stuff. Like there, you can get really crazy with aliens. Um, my version of crazy is uh, I made a Star Wars chess character, or as close as you can get to it. Uh, I guess I have a thing for blue skin, <laughs> um, and that's as good as I can get the red eyes. Um, and I'm, I'm aware of the irony of a Star Wars-esque character in a Star Trek game. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, I don't know, um, not too crazy. Um, I am a Star Trek fan. I am a Star Wars fan. I like them both. I'm not super hardcore to where, you know, I hate the other one. Um, I like them both. I like very specific things in both universes. Um, I guess I could classify myself as a hardcore casual. <laughs> Alright, but let's get into some more detail here. So, creating a new character. You do get nine slots in a free-to-play account, um, which is really nice, because then you get you can get three KDF, or Klingon Defense Force KDF pilots. Uh, you can get three uh, Fed pilots and still have three more left over to play around with. Um, like Romulans and Dominion. So let's cover this. And we'll start off with uh, at the top. So with the Klingon Defense Force ability. And you've got all these factions. So primarily it is Federation versus Klingon Defense Force. Uh, these two do not interact. Um, as of the latest updates, you can there are ways to get cross-faction ships, so 
So you'd have specific Klingon ships, and you'd have specific Starfleet, Starfleet ships. And if you're Starfleet, you don't fly Klingon. And if you're Klingon, you don't fly Starship or Starfleet. Um, so that's always been a thing up until about two weeks ago. Sorry about those pauses. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll probably notice a few of those. Um, I'm asthmatic and breathing, and I don't like to cough on you. Um, not a smoker, just have the like difficulty breathing part. <laughs> All right, so that stated, um, you've got a few sub factions of Federation. So you've got Discovery Starfleet, you've got normal Next Generation Starfleet, and you've got Original Season Starfleet. Uh, these are all the same side, and we'll go through them in, yeah, at some point here. Uh, actually, in a, in a second. Uh, then you've got Romulans, and uh, Romulans are their own like third faction. Um, and then once you get to a certain point in the storyline, you choose. Uh, you're either Starfleet, or allied with Starfleet, or you're allied with Klingons. And then from that point forward, you are... Starfleet or your Klingon. You can fly their ships, you can fly the specific Romulan ships. Um, so yeah, and, and you get that. But with the cross-faction event thing going on, like if you get a level 65 Klingon, which is max level again, and uh, or if you pay the money to buy the cross-faction allowance, unlock is a good word for it, um, now you can fly Federation ships or Starfleet ships as KDF and vice versa. So nothing matters anymore. <laughs> you can just fly pretty much whatever ships you want. Um, there are other ships that we might look into, but for the most part, you've got Starfleet, you've got Klingons, Romulans go either way, and then you have Dominion as well. So uh, Dominion are like Klingons, or not Klingons, uh, Romulans. Uh, except they're an advanced class. Yeah, I guess we'll just click on those to show them how. Um, so if you want to create one, you start at like level 50 or 60. Um, you're, you're really close to max level. Um, and they have their own ships. And then I think at some point you have to choose as well. you got to pick a side. Starfleet or Klingon. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've ever played a Dominion character. I don't have one. Never made one, so not too familiar with them. Um, it is something that will happen here in the future. It's just uh, I got a few other things to do before I get to this point. All right, so let's get get into some of the races. Uh, this is Klingon Defense Force, and every side or each side has sub races. So you have your Next Generation Klingon. You've got Discovery Klingon. These are new as of the new Klingon event, since it apparently is the year of the Klingon. Uh, Gorn are the lizard men. And uh, if you go into character creation, uh, let's see if it'll let us do it. So they look like Godzilla. But, uh, and we're not going to create a KDF character. That's a, another day thing. But you can get the original series duck lizard head. There you go. So, a few things that you can see. I did see a real, someone with a really cool build where they had this original Duck series and they were in, like, a bunny costume. Crazy. Um, not sure what a Lethian is. Um, I'm sure they're from their series somewhere. I've never played one of these before. Uh, Nausicans are like pirates, kind of look like predators. Uh, Orions, everyone knows female Orions, but there are male Orions as well. Um, I think the first time you see a male Orion is in like Star Trek Enterprise. That was kind of a cool little feature. Uh, and then aliens, and you can be, you can customize these to your heart's content. Uh, every race has specific abilities they start with. Uh, aliens can choose, so they get like an extra trait that they can pick later on. Uh, so we're going to go to Starfleet next. The Klingon event going on, so these are at the top now. 
Uh, actually, no. You know what? We're going to use Discovery Starfleet. Well, let's work down the list. So Discovery Starfleet is uh, well, based on the new Discovery series that I think is on Season 3. Uh, Discovery got a lot of negative feedback similar to Enterprise. Um, but I think it was warranted. <laughs> the first season, like, Klingons look completely different. And it's supposed to take place before the original series, but you've got advanced technology. And um, honestly, it just was kind of a disaster from the start. Uh, season one was just, it was okay, I guess. Um, season two was better, and they spent a lot of time fixing <laughs> the stuff that they put in that season one. Um, and I haven't seen season three yet, so uh, one of these days we'll finish watching that. All right, so um, Discovery has a different starting tutorial. Uh, it's the same but different. Um, and then every, like every Starfleet that you go through, um, you'll have a different, slightly different starting experience, and then you'll get to a point where you just catch up to the normal timeline, and it does the whole Star Trek time jump thing, and sends you to the current time period for Star Trek Online. Uh, but you get humans, Vulcans, and of course, of course, aliens. So your selections here are really limited. Um, nothing really special other than your uh, discovery captain and uh, your starting experience is slightly different um, it's just kind of like they, they release these different sub factions with different like uh, patch content expansions based on what's happening in the real world of course so when discovery came out uh, three years ago uh, this was a big brand new thing and uh, I started playing around that time so my first character was actually a discovery captain just to because, hey, let's try this out. Uh, we covered Dominion a little bit. Um, and then, so this is the original series, TOS, Starfleet, and you can see it's got a, good, a nice retro feel to it. Uh, some of these races are also limited, so you've got that nice little retro look. You can be Andorian, Tellarite, or Vulcan. Uh, and these are all original series. Uh, I think these are the founding races of the Federation. So, uh, if you're really nostalgic and into the old school stuff, this does have a nice play, like intro play stuff. I, it, it's really, really fun, actually. Um, and I do have at least one original series character uh, on my other accounts. So this is being a free, apply, a free to play account. This is like my third account. Okay, so Romulan Republic. Uh, everybody knows Romulans. Maybe, hopefully, uh, they're like space elves, <laughs> and Romulans are just you get Romulan or alien, and that's it for free. And they have their own unique starting experience. Um, pretty, pretty basic there. And then there are other races that you can pay money to unlock um, later on, like uh, for. Romulans, you can get Remans as well. I think it costs a few dollars. Um, and you can unlock and play, or play as a Reman if you want. Alright, so Starfleet. This is what we're going to make. Uh, Next Generation is kind of the basis of this entire game. Uh, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager. Uh, they all kind of took place in the same time period. So uh, you'll see that's kind of like the game itself. All right, so Starfleet, and you get a whole plethora of races here. So humans, Dorians, Majorans, Benzai, Ben, Benzai, yeah, yeah, y y you can read. <laughs> I obviously cannot talk, um, but I mean, there's a thing, you know, Ferengi, Paclets, and, and it, you scroll down, and I mean, you run across all these races as well. And just like everything, you've got alien races as well. Uh, we're just going to be a basic human. And uh, let's get going here. So here's where you can select your tactical engineering. We're going to go with science. And there's a brief description of uh, what things are. Don't want to spend too much time in character creation. 
Uh, you can just kind of randomly grab a preset if you want. Hey, look, it's Jordy ish. Jordy esque. <laughs> um, and there are a lot of customization options. Like, these are all just presets, but you can do skin tone, eye color, hair color. Uh, we're going to change hair color to black. It, uh, it's grayish. Make this a representation of myself ish, sort of. Start to get those gray hairs going. Uh, and if you do the advance, uh, you can see, I mean, there's just. You, you can customize so much stuff here. Uh, again, we're not going to spend too much time. Let's just do... Mm -hmm. I'm stick with human one. And let's see, basic complexion, ears good. Yeah, that hairstyle's fine. There's the beards. You can do fancy stuff. Yeah, that'll work. We can make that the same color as our hair. Oh, this is actually changing our hair color. Ah, there it is. And up here is like a recently used color list. Let's get that hair to match. Eyebrows to match. And it's shiny, so we'll dull that down a little bit. You can skull height. Really, really in-depth stuff. Okay, and then we can move on to body. So uh, I like to go into basic, and we uh, need six two. That's good height, but I mean you can go down to five six. Uh, six four. Uh, I think we'll stick with like six one, and then you can change your stance. So you've got, you know, you can look like you're ready for a fight, be a weird little creature, just look like you're hunched over there, <laughs> super relaxed, stern. And they do they do little poses when they uh, they're just standing there idle. Swagger is one of my favorites, so we're gonna do we're gonna do that one for now, and uh, a little more customization. I mean, you can do feet. Not a whole lot of games that have this detailed of uh, customization. Um, there are a couple out there that I can name that are pretty good really in-depth but this is one of those or isn't one of those <laughs> so you can do presets and pick a different uniform flavors if you want um, do the same thing here you've got a bunch of different uniforms we are going to stick with this one um, rank yeah we're going to change that badge on the chest I think we're going to do that yeah, we like this one right here. Uh, pants. Um, there are skirts in the game. Uh, you don't get these initially. You do have to like log in and, and like accept them from the store. Um, and I've already done that on one of the other characters, so it now shows up for this character. Um, if we do skirt, there's also the scant uniform, which um, is essentially a mini skirt for men or if you, men or women. Doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to stick with what we had. So what do we have here? Pants loose. And I think we had Odyssey pants. So, yeah. 
the seatbelt. All right, that'll work. Okay, so that's a um, quick run through character creation. And we're good with where we're at. We can always change this stuff later um, in the tailor, which we'll cover again. Okay. So, got a name or character. And then let's, yeah, we'll take the Archangel. That's good. And that is character creation, name or ship. We're ready to start. Here we go. If there is voiceover, uh, I am going to just let it play through and, and not talk. And we are going to play the tutorial. Uh, I've already gone through it on another character. Once you go through it once on a character, you can skip it. Um, but we're not going to do that, of course. So we're going to play through. And intro video. I don't remember if this talking. Maybe. I don't know if they've ever changed this as well. It's After like, left oh. fleet, let's listen to Leonard Nimoy. Work to reunite the Rungavans with their Vulcan brothers. For many years, I lived among them and waged a campaign of peace. Live long. Twenty-one years ago, the star of the Hobus system went supernova and sent a wave of devastation across the quadrant. I promised to save the Rungavan homeworld. I failed. The planets Romulus and Remus were destroyed. Countless <coughs> beings were killed. My home, my friends, my life, all are memories. Time does not stop for one man, and neither does history. The chaos in Romulan space gave the Klingon Empire an opportunity to expand its territory. Jim Pak, the Chancellor of the High Council, traded diplomacy with the tip of a blade. Only in battle, Jim Pot says, is a Klingon truly Klingon. The Federation did its utmost to preserve its alliance with the Klingons, but war was inevitable. The Romulans want revenge for their lost world. The Dominion rebuilding its forces. Now the Borg have reappeared, and the Alpha Quadrant balances on the edge of ruin. The fate of the galaxy rests in your hands. Yeah, I don't think they've ever changed that. Um, it's always been the same in the three years I've played. Uh, still not bad. Welcome to Star Trek Online. Yes, welcome. Today is graduation day, and you soon will be embarking on your training cruise, where the bulk of the ship is manned by cadets like yourself. This tutorial will introduce you to the basic controls of Star Trek Online, including movement, combat, and interacting with characters and objects. Uh, some of these I might skip. Um, it's... I'll do the talking, I guess. <laughs> Alrighty, and uh, first thing I have to do is I have to fix my keys. So we are going to hit escape, go into options, oh, not talk, there we go. Um, actually, before we do that, let's do the rearrange HUD thing. Um, so heads up display is all of your stuff, and you can move it around. You can see it's now green. Some of these boxes are over here. Um, I do already have a preset saved, so when I go into options, I can go to the HUD tab and load my UI. So that will load everything I need it to load. And then, um, okay, there we go. Trying to get that to move. <laughs> uh, and then our keybinds need to be changed. So uh, basic keyboards are your standard WASD. Um, in any MMO I play, I have to change this. <laughs> it's not how uh, WASD cramps my hands. I, I have larger hands. So uh, so what I do here, and uh, my wife and friends say I have weird movement keys, but you can make your own opinion. Uh, this is how you can change them, and uh, if you want to try it out, 
you can always reset the default on another day. So, um, so, so for me, everything's kind of shifted a little bit to the right. So instead of move forward is W, I have E. Uh, back is D instead of S. And then move left and move right, I use strafing keys for. So uh, the Q and R. And then turn left is the only one that stays the same. And turn right is F. Um, auto move forward is this little on the number pad. And this is the rest of this is fairly normal. Okay, uh, a couple of things we're going to change as well is aim mode. So aim mode is, so S is not used for me. It's kind of like in the, in the middle. It's easy to hit. So I use that to aim. Uh, when you do aim, um, you are, you, you're, your like accuracy goes up, I believe, and you'll essentially do more damage. Uh, crouch is a V for me. Um, C is really handy, and um, I still am retraining my, my muscle memory on that, so I might accidentally hit C uh, a few times, but I needed something different because when we scroll down, um, we're going to change that to open character uh, screen, like pretty much any other game that I've ever played. Uh, shooter mode. We're going to clear and get rid of this. Uh, some people like shooter mode. I don't. And um, when I accidentally go into shooter mode and then come back out, the game has a tendency to reset my keybinds. And it is very annoying. Um, so inventory, I like to use G, but I keep I as well. And then the status screen is your character select screen. Um, so those are the buttons I change for ground, and there is a space option. So there we go. A little easier for me to move around. Uh, and I use those keys because, um, like I said, the WASD cramps my fingers. But if you notice on your keyboard, there's these little tabs, and if you put your pointing finger on like the F, which is where that, that little tab is, uh, even in the dark or whatever, I can feel where that's at, and then my hand is in the normal resting position for everyday typing. All right, sorry about that pause there. Um, starting to lose my voice a little bit. I think I'm getting another one of those colds, so uh, this is a if you have kids, you understand exactly where I'm coming from. Uh, little mobile petri dishes that spread all sorts of stuff. Okay, so uh, movement keys. Uh, that's right, we're going to go in and look at... We can change the space keys as well. I don't usually change too much of these. Um, so like uh, pitch up is R. I think it saved my presets. It did. Okay. So these are all different. I think these are the WASD stuff as well, um, but I modified them slightly. I don't have strafing, and uh, my brain doesn't work like left, right when you go up, down. So I altered these keys. The R and the, the V for up and down. R is above, V is below. It just it manages better in my, in my brain. Um, pretty much everything else is the same. We are going to change this. So fire all phasers is spacebar, but fire all weapons is alt. So I want that to be spacebar, and then we'll just do alt spacebar for the other one. Okay, and then lastly, um, we already have the G saved in here, and then our status, we're going to do the same thing with the C. And hopefully that'll stick. Um, oh, that's what I was going to mention. Um, Star Trek has been on, around for 11 years. Some of the, the older episode content is the graphics are not the greatest, <laughs> although I think they might have like revamped a couple things here and there. Um, but one of the biggest things is there are lingering bugs in the game. Um, and I think they want to f fix them, but they can't. Um, keep in mind, this is a free-to-play game. So they don't have like the mega income that like World of Warcraft would have. So I'm sure there's a small development team. Um, and then also it has changed owners over the years. So I think it was Atari that first released it. And there's a, you know, 
you have ground and you have space, and then you have to find a way to have those two interact a little bit. Um, so then they had, so they created all that stuff originally, and then it went to a, a different company, and now it's with Cryptic, and it's like the third or the fourth company that's owned the Star Trek Online franchise. <laughs> um, and at some point, I do believe they lost the original like coding stuff, so they can't really go in and change it. If they do have changes, it's probably like spaghetti code, and so like nobody knows how to work with it. <laughs> uh, so I think that's part of the problem. And when we run the KDF, the, the Klingon campaign, um, I've run it on my other accounts, and they, they not sure if they completely rewrote the opening tutorial sequence, um, but it's like the same, but different. And the graphics are better, and, and um, it's just better. So we'll cover that in the other video. Uh, whoa, one more thing I gotta take care of. So this right here, uh, you'll see these little fly things across when somebody grabs a or gets this special Command Strike Warbird Tier 6. Um, we're going to fix that, because I don't want that flying in like that. Uh, I think I'm in the wrong spot again. can never remember where that's at. Notification settings, there we go. Um, and this is something I didn't even discover until relatively recently um, you can see these in chat we're actually going to turn that off and we're going to turn the fly-ins off as well um, we don't really need to see what other people get you know this is from like a lockbox or so that's i think that's that is from a lockbox actually um, there we go so we'll just turn that off there are lockboxes in the game i know some people really don't like those um, there's a bunch of other things as well but um We'll discuss lockboxes at a later time. Uh, I'm going to fix this. This is like a boost bar. Uh, and you can get boosts from missions sometimes, or you can buy them. I think they're a couple dollars or whatever. Uh, so like experience boosts. Uh, and how those work is anytime you do something that gives you experience, you get extra experience out of whatever pool that you have here. Um, best analogy I have for that is in World of Warcraft, if you sit down, you get rested XP while you're logged out. Um, it's essentially the same thing, except it always works and you can only get it through those special boosters. And then all these other ones do this as well, so you can get extra money, um, extra uh, credits, yeah, there we go, um, marks, and we'll cover all these as we play. I don't want to spend too much time talking here. I've already spent enough and we haven't done anything. Uh, so we're just going to go through the original tutorial and maybe cover a few things along the way. Um, so obviously this is a quest, so let's talk Finally, to her. Finally, I was beginning to think you forgot what today was. Of course, I was first in line. Oh, before I forget, I think Raski is just ahead. He wanted to thank you for helping him cram for the astrometrics final. And in the opening tutorial, this is great, we're going to get her as um, a bridge officer. And bridge officers are kind of like followers. Um, really nice. And we'll, we'll build out teams and stuff like that through various... Um, as we get them. So we'll cover that more later. There you are. I wanted to thank you for helping me pass that final. And for all the other times you've helped me. I've always admired you. I hope Starfleet recognizes all you've done to lead our class. What ship did you get? Good luck. Before you report to Lieutenant Farah and get your assignment, you should find Tavral. She wanted to talk to you. She's just up the pathway. I don't think we get this guy um, as a bridge officer, but we get one like him. He's a Saurian. Uh, I think that's like the last one we get. Uh, we do get Tavral though, so that's nice. Greetings. It was good of you to encourage me to retake the linguistics final. I was willing to accept my original results, but you saw that I was not at my best that day. My score increased by 12.8% on the second attempt. 
well within my standard norms. Now I am qualified to serve as both a science officer and a communications officer. Morik would like to see you as well. He is ahead of us on the path. Live long and prosper. Yeah, we'll cover more on the bridge officers um, as we get them. You can buy bridge officers in the store. And uh, that's another video, I think. <laughs> um, but you do get, uh, you can have a four maximum and you do get four for free. Although there are limited slots as well, so you might have to buy like extra slots. That's where they get you with the money, is, you know, if you want to have eight bridge officers to choose from, you can only have four at a time, but if you want to, like, certain ones are really good, some of the ones are not so good, and I'll cover that as well later. There you are. Getting excited yet? Once we finish our training crews, we'll all be full-fledged ensigns. The buzz is, Captain Taggart hasn't named all of his senior staff yet. From what I heard, the advanced phaser training simulation is tripping people up. Uh, we don't get this guy. He's a Benzite, I think. Uh, although we do get a different, different guy. Uh, before we go too much further, let's cover this. So you have the mini map, and you can zoom in and out a little bit. It tells you where we're going with these circles. And then you also, if you hit M, uh, you have a main over map as well. So this is Starfleet Academy, and we need to go over here. So this is a normal walking pace, and you do have a sprint. If you hold the sh or hit the shift button while you're moving forward, you will run. So we're going to talk to Lieutenant Fair. Good afternoon, Cadet. What can I do for you? Yes, I have the complete assignment list here. Name? Let's see. Interesting. Report to Captain Taggart. He's in the office behind me. You're going to have to ask him. Right. And glowy things are interactable objects, so we're going to go up here and ring the bell. Come. Okay. <laughs> Very brief and to the point. Cadet. I did. I've been following your progress here at the Academy, and I must say, I'm impressed. I'm just looking at your final test scores, but I don't see your results for the advanced phase of training program. I want everyone on my senior staff to run that program, and I want to see good results, no exceptions. I did. Like I said, I've been following your career here at the Academy. If you complete that program, I can put you on my bridge. I'll ask my tactical officer to set it up. Another fine cadet like yourself. Her scores were almost as good as yours, but her record has a few blemishes. Still, I'm sure Cadet Flores will settle down and become a fine officer someday. I'll tell Flores to meet you out in the quad. Talk to her to start the phaser training, and I'll see you when you're finished. You're dismissed, cadet. Right, and back to where we would just were. <laughs> so, sprint a lot, just time saver. Uh, there are no mounts in the game uh, that I'm aware of, so nothing really to make you go faster other than sprinting. Um, but, I mean, most of what you're going to do is an open world anyway, so you're not running to um, like a specific place to go to a dungeon or whatever. You're going to be clicking on buttons and like instantly teleporting into places. And then you'll play through the scenario. So let's talk to Cadet Flores. I got the tactical officer spot. Just what I wanted. Where'd you end up? You never did that? I thought you were Mr. Extra Credit. Everyone knows that Captain Taggart expects all his top people to pass that program. Don't worry. You'll do fine. Come on. I'll take you to the holodeck and set it up. Seems most of our class ended up on Captain Taggart's ship. And, uh, there's San Francisco Bay. Golden Gate Bridge. Anyone familiar with, uh, Star Trek knows that San Francisco is a major city. Have you seen the whales in San Francisco Bay? I never seem to spot them. I sometimes forget that Boothby is a hologram. He seems like such a fixture here at Starfleet Academy. 
last one of the console buys the first round tonight. <laughs> She's kind of saucy. And we all know how I like saucy. Setting up the training program now. I hope holodeck two phasers are in the lockers by the holodecks. You can yeah, I cut her off a little bit, sorry. Uh, a lot of this is, I mean, fairly boring. This is why you skip the tutorial for the most part. Uh, and the Federation tutorial is... It's going to probably take two or three videos. <laughs> um, I mean, there's like this intro part, and then we're going to cut out here. And let's grab our phaser real quick, though. Yeah, well, good point to a good spot to cover inventory. So, um, yeah, the tutorial's got like this quick part, and then there's like a ground portion, sort of, and then the space portion. Um, I'm not gonna cover. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go into a lot of that too soon. Um, and then we're gonna spread it out over a few videos. It it kind of sucks that it's long, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I mean you need to learn how to play the game, so that's a good, does a fairly good job of that. Uh, so we just picked up a phaser, so it's a good time to cover our inventory. Uh, there's nothing here, and then our character select, and it just auto-equipped our phaser. So um, this is your character screen, and we'll cover uh, a few things here. So uh, kit we'll cover in a second. So body, when we get these, is going to cover, uh, it's like resistances, and it's just it's just armor. Thought we'd turn those off. We did. Oh, we turned admins off. Oh, we want those. So turn gameplay off. Go away, gameplay things. Alright. <laughs> yeah, late night recording. Okay, so uh, body is armor. If you click on it, it'll give you a list of all of your available stuff that you have. We have nothing. Uh, you can also click and drag from your inventory if you want to. Um, so these will give you resistances to damage on your health. Um, and there's a few other things that will give you as well, but primarily it's resistances. Uh, shields, there's this blue bar up here, and that's what takes damage first. And shields have a bleed through, so like this is a 10% bleed through, meaning that uh, any damage I take, 10% uh, of that damage is going to go through my actual health pool. And uh, when you're out of combat, shields will regen. So. Uh, that's kind of handy. If you right click, you can go to more details and get a better view of all this stuff. So, rapid, rapidly regenerate after taking no damage for three seconds. Two seconds of crouching uh, is a really basic shield. You have two weapon slots. Uh, usually, I'll, I will do like a ranged weapon, um, almost always a rifle. I'm, I'm, I like the rifles. Uh, there are there are phaser pistols. There are rifles. There's different types of rifles like sniper rifles and full auto rifles. There's stun phasers, uh, and then there's really alien stuff like the purple stick of death. Um, it's essentially a bladed stab that shoots polaron purple polaron beams that chain fire into other things. Um, that is not a free to play thing. <laughs> that is going to be even harder to get. That You can't just buy it. You have to uh, get another currency called Lobi or Lobi. Uh, and you get these crystals out of lockboxes. And that's like 200. And you get like 5 out of a lockbox. And it's, it's really nice if you have the crystals. If you don't have the crystals, we'll find something else. Um, secondary slot, I usually put a melee weapon in here. Like a sword or... Um, if you're Klingon, a bat left or something like that. Uh, so that'll usually go in here, and if you hit the Z key, it'll actually switch you between, you'll see right down here, Z will switch us between punching, because we have no melee weapons, or the phaser thing that we got. Uh, devices are, uh, like, usually one-time use things. So this is a hypo. Uh, basically, it's a healing potion, and... Uh, those give us little ability bars down on our action thing here. So normally, when you first start, you're going to have one. And if you click this little step thing, it'll give you up to three. And I like to have three. Um, and if you click this little button right here, this gives you a list of all of your available abilities. And you can just click and drag. Um, so I move these around. I uh, don't use this mental discipline thing very often, so we'll stick that there. 
this is something we click on, and this is something we're going to use. I usually leave 1, 2, 3 as uh, primary damage ability, secondary, and almost all guns and weapons will have a primary and a secondary. Secondaries usually have a longer cooldown, or do more damage, or have like an AoE spread. Um, and then third is almost always like a palm strike, or if you have a rifle, like you butt them with your rifle. <laughs> uh, and there are a few weapons that have like a third ability as well. Um, and I, these are, you know, one through zero, I use the number pad just like it, it has in there, or the, the keys on my keyboard. And I usually have the first three as damaging abilities. And then I have longer cooldown periodic stuff here in the four, five, six. Uh, 7 is like a one-shot damage, 8 is usually a heal for me, 9 is like a buff thing, which um, some of these devices you get, you can get like triples, and they give you uh, bonus buffs, things that you can you can just click on them, and, like you pet the triple, triple and it gives you a bonus to resistances or something, uh, and 0 I use every now and then as well. Um, when I want to do alternate abilities, uh, the A1 through 3 is alt and the number, and that's what I usually use. So I don't use the second tray for a whole lot, because control is a little harder for me to hit. These abilities, like what I put on this bar are these ones here, like resuscitate, where I'm rarely going to use it, and when I do use it, I'm probably going to just click on it and then do whatever. Um, but that's just kind of a quick rundown of what I do there. And then more devices here you can like when you get more devices like remodulators, um, there's a dino pet that you can buy if you want, tribbles in here, uh, more hypos things, shield boosters, that kind of stuff. Those will all go in here and put something on your bar. Uh, the kit that we looked at before, um, at some point you'll get a kit frame, uh, and it, it like gives you extra passive things. Um, if you are a World of Warcraft player, this is kind of like a trinket. Uh, most of the time they're either passive or there's a clicky effect or something along those lines. Um, and you, you don't get those very often. <laughs> um, or, well, no, that's the wrong word. Um, you don't get those right away. That'll, that'll take a few down the road before we get one of those. And then kit modules are like devices, except they are not one-time use. Um, and they kind of trigger off the kit frame that you get. So we'll get one of these at some point, and then we'll have to put, like, I think it's medical tricorder we get right away. So we'll have to put the ability on our bar somewhere. Actually, this is going to move because I'm going to put that medical tricorder ability right there. Um, so there's, like, five bonus abilities on top of what you would normally get. Pretty simple. Uh, stats are... No well, stats. <laughs> I don't pay a whole lot of attention to most of this stuff because it's just, I, I know what I want. And you'll get crit chance and crit severity and that kind of stuff. But it is worth covering the resistances. Uh, this covers the flavors of damage that you have in the game. Getting punched, uh, getting something thrown at you, phasers, disruptors, plasma. Um, all the flavors have different like sub-abilities when you have better equipment and you want resistances to, to, you know, whatever you can here. Uh, and then you go into, like, electrical, radiation, toxic fire. These are environmental, and there are a few weapons that do these types of damage. Uh, like, there's an electrical gun, there's a, some guns with fire, there's a cold resist one you get. Not sure about some of these other ones, but... Um, naturally, you want as many resistances to these as possible. So you take less damage from all those damage types. Uh, we got a ship here as well, but we are going to cover that once we get into the space phase. Uh, really quick rundown here. Skills, we don't have any skill points yet, but so we'll, we'll ignore that for now. Uh, traits, we're going to cover this real quick. Traits are like bonus abilities that you'll get. Uh, most of these are passive, but like, uh, so we have soldiers, so we have bonus damage. Uh, we have mental discipline, so we have bonus resistances and aggression. So more bonus damage, more bonus threats. And you have ground, space, and then you can get these later ones um, unlock when you're at max level and do like reputation maxing and things like that. Uh, so as a human, this is what we start with. And we can switch it. Like this one here, I don't really use ever. So uncheck it and it goes away. 
and then we will find one that we do actually use, which... Which one do we usually take here? We're going to get a rifle at some point, so I, I take rifle training. Uh, right now, though, we have a pistol, so we're going to take that one, and we'll change this out later. You can change these out pretty much anywhere. I don't think you can change them in combat, but pretty much anywhere else you can change them. So, space traits, uh, I think these are all fairly decent. Man, we might change these later, but actually, yeah, we're going to change this one right now. Um, don't really care for, like, extra hull hit points are nice. But, with that starter ship that we're going to get, we want, we're going to need Thrill Seeker, which gives us flight speed. Wait, is that the right one? That might be the wrong one. <laughs> uh, where is it? What we really want is turn rate at this point. don't think we have a turn rate one available yet. This one we're going to want as a science captain for sure, but we don't have a science ship, so not that big a deal. Actually, there we go. Let's grab accuracy so we are better at hitting things. Uh, stations, these are the bridge officers that I mentioned before for ground and space, and we'll cover that when we get more, because it is time to finish this out. <laughs> Alright, let's go. I don't know if it's Elisa or Eliza, but we'll just call her Flores. And into the holodeck. Move to the center of the room. And begin program. We're magically on a Klingon ship. Yay! Okay, so hitting a button will usually auto-target the first thing. Uh, you can hit tab to cycle through them. And uh, remember we have the aim mode, so this kind of zooms us in and we do a little extra. And then we have crouch. So crouch combined with aim, and we don't have to aim and crouch if we don't want to. Uh, crouch is defensive, so you take less damage when you're crouching, and aim basically makes you do more damage. So, And it's just a little harder to move. You can move while aiming and then you can hit run and it'll just auto end it for you. And then I'm sure you can hear my keyboard. Uh, that is something I can't get around. <laughs> I guess I hit my keyboard pretty hard. Um, and I've, I've tried a few things to try and get rid of it, but the, the background noise, but I'm working on that. So hopefully that doesn't annoy you too much. <laughs> Well done, cadets. You're not going to break the account. Absolutely. Oops. I have a new Man. first officer. Congratulations. Yes. You should be proud of your accomplishments here, cadet. You have a promising career ahead of you in Starfleet. First officer, way to go. Just a little jealous, I'll admit. <laughs> At least now you'll get to boss us all around like you've always wanted. You'll do great, but we should head up to the shuttle bay. Everyone else is waiting there for the ceremonial send-off toast. All right, moving on. Heading to the turbo lift, which is now hear this. All cadets report down to shuttle here. bay to prepare for departure. Do -do -do. Okay, all of the senior staff is waiting by the bar. I'm sure everyone's a bit nervous, this being our first real assignment and all. So, I'm expecting an inspiring speech out of you. Something heartwarming. Make Tavrell cry. This mission... Oh, she was still talking. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, so, um, I do believe this kind of chains into uh, a whole another set of things so we're gonna end the video here and pick that up uh, another day um, in the meantime I'm gonna cover uh, one more thing real quick and that's gonna be this store um, you can access that right here at the Zen store so 
we'll just click that and we'll open this up this is your pay to win stuff and uh, 100 Zen is one dollar so you can see this legendary discovery Federation bundle is hundred and twenty dollars <laughs> um, you get a tier 6 level 65 sh uh, ship that scales with you a bunch of extra slots um, I mean, there's just a bunch in here, but definitely want to look into what you get to these for these packs. And this narrow window is kind of annoying, and if you're not sure, you can always just Google the pack name, and it'll usually pull take you to this, the Star Trek Online site. Uh, carriers are these are cool and new, uh, but a hundred dollars. Some of this stuff it doesn't make sense. You can you can always have to you know have to look it up. Uh, some of these are free, so right now we have that event going on, so this outfit is free for our Klingon captains for another seven days of, as of this recording. Um, and these are just the featured special things that are thrown out there. Uh, Mud's Market is things that are really old, um, or like no longer available, or super rare. So this is like $300, and you get to pick three of whatever is in here so <laughs> um and i don't think you can really get these very easily they're like old lockbox ships so uh, speaking of lockboxes um uh, yeah dino with freaking laser beams attached to its head uh 80 bucks a lot of times these will go on sale with deep discounts and if they do they like this is awesome i have this on one of my other accounts um, where i got it where it was like 80% off or something um, but it's really cool and what this is that this is like a device so you put it on there and it's an ability on your bar and you can just use it and a little thing comes out and fights for you um, does damage it's kind of kind of nice you can buy emergency medical holograms and this is multi-faction you can get a holographic Geordi so they can actually put like Geordi in here or the original series actors in here but they do holograms so you can have holograms uh, new items, uh, starter packs will come back to you, um, expansions are very expensive, packs of ships and abilities and things, uh, one of these days I will grab this one so I can fly this beautiful carrier, um, ship bundles, so these are bundles of ships, and cross-faction used to be a thing, like, um, this is a hundred dollars, and you get a Klingon ship, uh, a Starfleet ship, Romulan ship, and a Dominion ship, and you get four fleet modules, which are pointless till you're high level, or max level. Uh, Cross-faction bundles, I think, are going away now that you can do the whole multi-faction thing. Uh, is that in here as well? Uh, thought that was in here. Maybe it's gone. Yeah, there was a cross faction thing in here the other day. Oh well. Um, items. Is that where lockboxes are? Yeah. Okay. So lockboxes. Uh, you can grab these for free. This is the current lockbox that's out. It's got like a, a nice tier six ship in it and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, you'll get these as drops in in the game through episodes and things like that. Um, some of these like research and development packs you can just buy um, and you I mean you can have 10,000 of these and they're free and they give you lock boxes all the time but to open them uh, you need a master key Is it in here yeah master keys so master keys are a dollar 25 per key and it opens one lock box so and those are completely random uh, you might get super lucky and get like a ultra rare tier six special fancy ship. Um, most likely you're gonna get garbage. You might get like a XP booster or a fleet credit booster. Um, you can get all sorts of stuff, and and you have to really look up a, a lockbox to see what's actually in it. Um, but it's like a chance to get a really nice ship. Uh, and you also get those low buy. I, I say a low buy. Some people say low B. Um, 
you get those low buy crystals as well and those have their own little separate market that you can also buy things so I mean you only get like five per lockbox and like the cheapest thing is like 200 so uh, you get 10 packs uh, about a week ago they had a, a special where you get a 20 pack and then everything all the keys were 25 percent off so you buy a 20 pack and you get this upgrade thing and you get 20 keys to use in lockboxes and um, there you go sometimes you get promotions there's no promotion tab right now so this must not be anything going on um, anniversary s stuff one day you log in you can you can claim five keys um, so there are ways to get those with events uh, from free for free to play players so there's there's hope <laughs> um, there are things you can get so personnel are things like bridge officers this is a combat pack kind of like that dinosaur um, but it's eight dollars Borg's Brigade Officer is pretty good. You can do unlock races, so tabs across the top. Bridge Officers to help you out. Um, combat Companions are like the dinosaur. Weird looking tardigrade thing. Uh, companions, these are just vanity pets. They're just cute things that'll follow you around and do nothing. Uh, and then Species, so Cations. So you can be a cat person if you want. You can unlock Cardassians. This is the Klingon cat person. Uh, Jem'Hadar Vanguard, and these aren't too expensive, so... Uh, Join Trills have some really nice trades. Uh, you can be Klingon for Federation, like Worf. Uh, and here's the Riemann race. For some reason, the Riemann race and the Cardassians are like 10 bucks, and the rest are 6 Weird. I think you get these in bundles, too. Um, Okay, so uh, a couple more things I want to cover before I sign off um, is a little little bit of value tips. So um, if you don't want to spend any money on the game at all, ever, that's fine. Um, over time and a long time, you can actually go into this dilithium, and you'll get dilithium as... Actually, let's do open that. So inventory, R&D is your crafting system. Assets are your money. Marks for reputation that we, we will cover another day. Fleet, which we're not going to work worry about. Um, salvage and gold press lab, platinum. We don't even bother with those right now, or ever really. <laughs> uh, so dilithium. Um, when you do missions and episodes, and you'll collect ore, and then you can refine 8,000 dilithium per day, and you have it your own store, so you can buy things with it, uh, which we'll cover another day. Um, the only thing we're probably ever going to buy is this thing for now, this environmental suit. But anyway, um, you can go into the exchange. So if you have enough refined dilithium, you can buy Zen. Um, you can see here, uh, we want to buy, say we want to unlock a character race, and we want 600 dilithium, or 600 Zen. And the going rate is 491 probably 492 so we can put 492 in here so 492 dilithium per zen we need 600 zen so we need 295,200 dilithium refined dilithium to get enough zen to buy that character unlock at 8,000 zen refined maximum per day it's gonna take probably a few months to uh, to get to that so, but but I mean, there is hope. You can get Zen eventually, um, and Zen is care like account bound. So there are people who have dilithium farmers where they just have nine or more characters, and all they do is go out and farm. Like you can literally mine dilithium in certain areas, um, but they'll go collect as much dilithium as possible, refine it uh, every day, um, and then buy Zen. So we might need, like, we might have. 8,000 dilithium, or 80,000 dilithium, maybe we spent a week and a half to, to working on that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll just buy Zen with it, and then it goes into our little Zen pool in the store. And then you log into your other character and do the same thing, and then the same thing. And eventually it'll add up quickly, and you can get you can get enough to, to do that. So that's how you can do your free-to-play Zen. Uh, that's like a whole video in and of itself. <laughs> um, but if you do spend money on the game, uh, and this is something that I do, is... I'll set like $15 aside every month. 
Uh, $15 is any other MMO's typical standard going rate. Um, sometimes I'll do 20 it just depends on, you know, if I'm having a good week or whatever. Um, but you set the money aside on a monthly basis, and say you want to buy a ship. We want a Tier 6 Titan Science Destroyer. This is actually really cool. Um, it's 3000 Zen, or $30. So, $15 this month, $15 next month, and now I can go in here and buy this. Um, there are taxes involved, so it's like a couple dollars extra. Um, but you can buy them directly through just this Buy Zen tab. I play through Steam, so, you know, 5000 I can buy these in different increments. Uh, you can also go to the, the website and buy them directly from there as well. And it just shows up in here, and now you can actually afford to buy this Tier 6 Science Destroyer. And uh, it unlocks it for your, your entire account. Um, but it's a Federation ship, so only Federation and Federation-aligned Dominion and Romulan, Romulan characters can, can use it. Unless you get the unlock thing. Um, and I thought you could buy the unlock, which I don't know if that has changed. Uh, but if you get a character, a Klingon character level 65, then your Klingon character it should unlock that for you, and now you can actually use this on like a Klingon character. Um, and then like this is a Klingon uh, version of this, I don't know, sort of like the Straight Wing X-Wars. It's like a a fast DPS ship with a with like pets, uh, but it's Klingon only, so I can't use this as a Federation pilot until I unlock the cross faction thing. So that's my advice as far as spending money on the game goes. Um, I mean, what, $15, it's, if the minimum wage thing goes up to $15, it's like one hour of work, or it might be a couple hours of work, and, and I cannot stress that enough, I mean, if you are on a limited budget, uh, I am always on a limited budget, uh, so I will, I, I set a little bit aside, uh, $15, I don't notice, and then the second month I set another $15 aside, um, now I have enough to buy a ship if I want, and as long as all the, the rest of the like real life is taken care of, there you go. You, you spent the time, reward yourself, you have money to spend. However, if you are going to do that, uh, we have some immediate recommendations, and it's not buying a ship right away. Um, we're going to slots and services, and um, these are things like extra character slots, rename, bridge officers. These are handy sometimes. Um, because if you want that eight, you're gonna end up spending 250 for two more slots. Bank slots are good. Um, first thing that I would buy, two things actually. Um, where is it? Here we go. Energy cre credit cap increase. So, free play, you're you're capped at 15 million uh, energy credits, which is your your normal money. Uh, not a terrible thing at first, um, but as you play the game more, like you can't go over 15 million. Um, I did sell some stuff. I, I bought some I, I, some keys. And I sold a couple to make some quick energy credits to buy something else. Uh, once I sold three at about seven million a piece, and it's 21 million. But I can only hold 15 million without this. So I lost six million energy credits. Just gone. Complete waste. Five dollars, two billion. This should be one of your first purchases. Period. Um, I mean, it, it might. If you can, if you gotta wait a month or two, that's fine. Um, this is one of those things that's worth spending the money on. An incredible value there. Uh, second thing is account share bank. Um, not as important, but for ten dollars what you do is you get a, uh, an extra account bank which you can put things into and it's only ten slots but you can put something there log into another character and take it out uh, you can put money in there like your energy credits in there and then take it out on another account or another character um, this is a very good value as well and you can expand that later but ten slots this is if you're gonna have more than one character this is really nice like I could get a drop on this character and send it over to one of my other by just sticking this into the account bank. 
Um, if you really want to go crazy, this Elite Services Starter Pack is okay. Um, my main issue with this is it used to be account-wide, and now it's character-wide. And what you're really looking for, I mean, inventory, really nice. Extra bank slots, really nice. Bridge officers, retrain tokens are almost negligible at this point. Oh, losing my voice. Um, it's okay, but that w this is like down the list is maybe down the road. Uh, so energy credit cra credit cap increase, very good value, very worth the money, and that is account wide. So, uh, and then of course account wide bank slots. These are the first two that I would spend with like the fifteen dollars I saved for my first month. Um, alternatively, starter packs. So, so like this is all right. It gives you some like, some equipment and boost. It's four dollars if you're really budget minded. Um, the rest of these are about twenty dollars, and the elite starter packs is what we're looking at. The rest of these are okay. Like you know, they even put this one in here, but meh. Um, this used to be really good, but. It's not anymore. They should really reprice that. Um, but the Elite Starter Packs. So with these, and the Federation one is really good, um, you get a Tier 6 ship, the Reliant. Start with it right from... I think you have to finish the tutorial, but um, once you're done there, you're good. Extra inventory and bank, you get the two extra bridge officer slots. You get a free Borg Bridge Officer, who's really nice. This is like that $5 value. Uh, and then you get a bunch of equipment to go on your stuff. Mark II, very rare stuff. Uh, so equipment comes in like white, green, pur blue, purple. The typical, you know, elite, rare, whatever qualities. So very rare is purple. And um, they have different levels. So Mark zero, Mark one, twos. The higher the Mark value, the better it is generally, and then the higher the quality, also the better. So you got you got a couple of a couple of um, different measurements there. So uh, Mark 12 is generally the highest that you're going to get at max level. Um, that's where the, the drops are at Mark 12. When you when you go through a dungeon at max level, you'll get those. Um, and then the, the quality just varies. Uh, so that ship is really nice. Uh, you get a uniform too, which is whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> um, but the ship is tier 6. It scales with you. It's very nice for just about any captain. Um, a good layout. So, if you're Federation, this is a very good very good buy. $20. So you're looking at that, and then you're... Actually, yeah, I would probably buy one of these if you're going to spend money first. Um, grab an elite starter pack, and then next month buy the energy credit cap and the, and the account bank. Um, okay, uh, so Klingon Defense, if you're Klingon, again, if you want to play that race or that side of it. Um, Bird of Prey is... Um, it's good. It's right up there with the Reliant. It's it's not... It's a different play style for the most part. Um, like, this is like your engineering ship where you circle stuff and use beams. And this is more of an escort type ship where you, where you use cannons. Uh, and then the bridge officer, the Klingon bridge officer, is not quite as good, but it's it's a really small, like she has a different trait than this one does. And this one has like a space trait that's helpful, and this one doesn't have it. <laughs> um, and then the Romulan elite pack, same thing, you get a, a, a warbird, which is kind of like that bird of prey, um, only I think it looks better. And it's uh, functionally a little bit different. Uh, you get the Riemann Borg, Borg, Borg Bridge Officer, which again is not quite as good as the Federation one, but it's like one trade difference, so it's not that big a deal. Um, so these, if you're like, okay, I, I'm, I'm liking the game so far, I like the tutorial, um, I kind of want to start off and, and be better, uh, and I don't mind spending money, $20, good to go grab one of these elite starter packs uh, even if you do like a first month thing and you, you're like well my first month is 15 um, 
I think you do have to play through the tutorial, and I do recommend playing through the tutorial uh, before you actually pick one of these up, just to make sure you like the game. But if you do, uh, it's like it's you know twenty dollars plus another fifteen next month, so you're looking at thirty-five dollars, uh, and and that's all you really. It's like the price of a video game, and you have a good ship that you can use on just about every character, uh, unless you go to the other faction. You have uh, some basic starter equipment for whatever character you, you, you claim that one on. And then, of course, you get the bridge officer as well. So, kind of handy. Alright, so I've already spent a lot of time talking. Uh, we did a little bit of running around. Um, this video is a little bit longer than I want it to be, but inf information is what we want. Uh, hope you weren't too bored. We'll pick up again here with another video with more tutorial action. And uh, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.